everyone, we are back with our Unfiltered HR series. I'm Jen Strait with Complete Payroll. And I'm Emily from LA HR Partners. Well, you know what, before we do anything, we're gonna cheers to that. Cheers yeah. to summer. Yeah. Sorry we <laughs> haven't been around, but we've been enjoying the weather. But we're back. <laughs> we uh, made it. Today we are gonna talk about five reasons you may not be paying overtime correctly, which is a huge, huge topic right now. Yeah. Um, but before we hop into that, we want to say thank you so much to Anya and Cody and Andrew for allowing us to Stola. be at the Stola Bar. Um, and there's also Krishiki Bakery behind us and the Simply Pierogi. So it's a, it's a compound of restaurants that you can hop around. You get a bakery mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. You have a pierogi, and then you go to the bar. I really don't... You're here all day. The morning for bakery items. And they have a brunch, too, brunch. which is oh. amazing. There you go. So thank you so much for letting it. us uh, sit at the bar and enjoy your bakery items and your drinks and your food. Um, if you would like to have us host, uh, we would love to come visit you. Please let us know. Shoot us an email, a message. We would love to come shoot our video there. So yeah. let us know. And hopefully um, you have some beverages, right? Yes. We took a little have, break for a couple episodes, but now we're back. Yeah, yeah. It's summer, so <laughs> if you yeah, if you have beverages and uh, scenery, we're always looking for scenery yeah. too. So. Outdoor space. <laughs> Outdoor <laughs> space. Um, all right, let's hop into it. Yeah, Jen. So this is probably an unsuspecting but very uh, valuable topic for our, our viewing audience. Um, we're going to talk about really five reasons you may not be paying overtime correctly. Um, so, overtime, right, seems like a really simple concept. Generally, employees, if they work over 40 hours in a week, they're eligible to be paid overtime and need to be paid overtime at time and a half the regular rate. Uh, but it's really not that simple, Jen. Unfortunately, <laughs> so says this paper. <laughs> I get to be the bearer of bad news. Yeah. And yes, so the, the, the bad news is that the DOL, at especially the federal level, has clearly and explicitly stated, and we've probably talked about this in a couple other episodes yeah. and written pieces, that they're going to be more proactively seeking violations um, by employers in these areas of wage and hour law, which includes overtime. Um, so uh, there's already been a lot of news out there about some recent um, class actions and other cases, specifically for restaurants and manufacturing and warehousing industries, um, which are the, usually the, the least educated on these subjects where there have been some heavy claims and fines. So we thought it would be a good idea to talk about what some of the biggest pitfall areas are and the misunderstood areas of what needs to be included in that overtime calculation are so that you guys can take an audit of your practices, get in touch with Complete Payroll or your payroll provider and make sure it's all set up and ready to go. That so. was already a lot. I know. But <laughs> yeah, so basically what you need to take away so far from this is it's not just time and a half. Correct, yeah. Um, or, and we're going to get into the details about that, but um, you don't know what you don't know, and yes. it's, you know, you think you're paying time and a half and you think that's right, but um, in many cases it's not, and in almost, I guess, in all cases it's not right just to do that, but so there are formulas that are involved and things that you need to consider, and we're going to hop into those right now. And this is a little bit math-oriented, right, so, um, which can be hard to explain and articulate in person in an effective way. I'm not a math teacher. So uh, we do have a written piece that has already actually come out that you can, can find on my website, um, lahrpartners.com that breaks down a lot of this in further detail, the exact five points we're going to talk about today with math examples to illustrate the points here. Math examples. Yes, math. You're already stressing people out. <laughs> well, at least there's examples. And there's a way Complete Payroll can help, and we'll talk about that. That's right. You don't want to do the math, we'll do the math for you. Yes. Um, all right, so the first and probably most commonly uh, misunderstood or unknown fact is that, especially in New York State, and there are other states as well, um, there is a requirement to calculate overtime on what's called a weighted average basis, Jen. So what that means is um, if an employee, especially in cases if they're working multiple uh, pay rates, uh, multiple jobs that are multiple pay rates in a certain pay period, or if they have shift premiums or differentials or whatever you might call them included in their pay where when they work certain shifts or days they're getting paid extra, maybe less desirable shifts, um, all of that needs to be taken into consideration uh, when you are calculating the overtime rate. And this is all based on the origin point of that, which is the regular rate of pay. So. Um, a lot of times employers hey, may just calculate the uh, regular rate of pay based on um, the, the rate someone's actually working the job they're working, right? So say someone's working $15 an hour for part of the week and only minimum wage $13.20 for the other part of the week. 
uh, you actually need to take an average of those um, rates and the hours worked and use that to calculate what the average rate of pay is and then use that number to calculate the overtime rate, Jen. So th that's why you were saying that it's most common in restaurants and manufacturing because restaurants you work, you could be working a cook shift yeah. and a server shift and a host shift and those are all different pay rates. Yeah for one example, um, but that's probably the most common. Yeah. Um, and that's where if you're working overtime or manufacturing, you're a driver one day, you're working in the warehouse sure. another day, those are different. And yep. it's not, uh, the overtime isn't what just that shift is. Right. There's that formula that has to be. Yeah, involved. or if you're in a restaurant like here, I mean, you may have a manager who's working in a manager capacity for part of the week and then a bartender capacity for another. Um, so where this gets into trouble is um, if, during the overtime hours, right, someone hits 40 hours in a week, if during the overtime hours toward the end of the week they're working in the lower wage position and you just pay overtime on that rate, that's actually not reflecting a weighted average or that higher rate they worked earlier in the week. So therefore the overtime rate will be lower than it needs to be. So you have to calculate an average of all the wages earned to then calculate the overtime rate. And again, there'll be an example on our website, but if you have basically the flag for right now is if you have employees that are working multiple pay rate jobs in a work week, this is something you need to make sure is considered and you can get programmed into your payroll system, whether it's complete uh, payroll or another payroll system, you can have them set up a formula for this. But I mean, it should be complete payroll. It should, yeah. yeah. Um, but in all seriousness, make sure you are checking with your payroll company because are they, is a payroll company responsible for letting you know that are figuring that out or is the business owner making sure that that's being yeah. done so that's something that you have to at least yeah. talk to your payroll provider about that that formula is set up because it's not automatic right it's not it's something not your payroll company is going to tell you about unfortunately um there is that fine line between what Jen does and what Complete Payroll does and what we do at LIHR Partners, which is making sure that you're compliant versus running your payroll. So it is something you usually need to request and ask for. Um, and that's pretty common and normal. All right, so number two, Jen. I'm going to have a step of this. I know. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Grab a drink, get home, and, and drink a lot. Um, all right, so number two is, it kind of goes along with number one, but um, similarly to that, um, probably you also aren't understanding or don't know everything that has to be included as a regular wage when determining total wages to then determine the overtime rate. So the best example here is, Jen, if, if you are a company that has hourly employees who need to be paid overtime and they're making commissions or bonuses or have stipends as part of their pay, all of that needs to be used in the gross total to then divide by the number of hours to determine what someone's regular, regular hourly rate is to then determine what the time and a half rate is. That is very interesting. I can honestly say I don't think anyone would think that. Correct. It's very it's uncommonly known. Um, uh, it seems simple if you're paying someone a medical um, opt-out benefit or something like that um, or a bonus for attendance or something like that you would not think that has to be included to, to um, with the overtime calculation but it does and this is a really common area where things can add up if you pay someone $500 bonus that can obviously greatly increase their overall average pay rate which really would increase the overtime rate so it can mean big back pay um, that's you when the and you said stipends so that's like if they get a, a car allowance or a phone allowance that's all included in their salary yeah it could it. include those items because um, really the best case scenario would be to have those things processed through payroll as reimbursements not as stipends right. so that okay. they can be differentiated between what's supposed to be regular pay and what's not um, so these are all things to audit in your own payroll practices and wage payment practices yeah, yeah that's something definitely to look at then and it's good to know yeah. because that's when you start doing the calculations for the overtime yeah. having the reimbursement um, will make things a lot cleaner yeah, and this is probably mere dollars, you know, each payroll for each employee, but if you have multiple employees and then going back three years, that can add up to a lot of money over time. Yeah. Um, and the DOL will go back up to three years uh, in some cases for these violations, so definitely something you want to take care of now. All right, and again, there's a math example on uh, my website with written examples for this too if you want to follow up and look at that and how it affects the overall rate. And if that doesn't get you to a payroll company, I don't know what will. Yes, I know. <laughs> 
Um, so, all right. The last three items, Jen, they aren't as complicated. They're a little more simple, a little bit easier. Hopefully you're already doing some of these and some of these we've mentioned in past videos as well. But the third way you may not be uh, calculating it properly is just simply by not including all the time that needs to be counted toward hours worked for overtime and that includes breaks, Jen. So we've talked about this yeah. before. Uh, employee breaks, a huge area where people don't think about the implications later, but if you are auto-deducting meal periods and not having employees clock in and out or record that they actually take their meal periods each day that they are due to take them, that 30 minute time for lunch or whatever it is, um, you really should be doing that because it takes just one employee to come in and say they never took their breaks or that they even worked for a part of those breaks. Um, or that they were asked to engage with customers during their breaks sure. to have the DOL say, guess what, you're going to pay that person for three years of breaks now. Right. And that's a lot of time. And there's no way to prove that. And it could be on, you know, the benefit of both people where the employee is saying, or the employer is saying, you have to take this break. And there's almost no way for them to babysit everyone yeah. to make sure that they are taking the break and maybe the employee themselves you get wrapped up in your work and you just don't realize that you're not taking the break yeah. but then um, but then there's issues if you're not punching out and you are getting deducted for that and sure. not being paid for that time so yeah. it's really important to have even if it's salary have those punches yeah. recorded record 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 there couldn't be I yeah. think anything better than having electronic recording of of all punches yeah. whether your salary or not those records will save you endless amounts of you know past due wages attorney's fees to fight these things whatever it might be so do not auto deduct if you're doing that now with any payroll provider you're with would definitely recommend um, changing that practice the best thing to do is have employees record breaks or get around all of it by just paying for the meal period breaks because that removes the financial motivation for the DOL or employees to come after you for claims later. Absolutely. All right, number four, we're getting there. <laughs> Two more. Um, number four, um, this is something we've talked about in a previous episode as well, but just gonna touch on it again here. Um, another thing that you potentially could be doing that is causing an overtime issue is treating non-exempt employees incorrectly as exempt employees, Jen. So when we're talking about overtime, and there's previous episodes on this and written pieces on my site as well, the only employees that you have to pay overtime to are non-exempt employees, and those are the employees who typically are going to pay on an hourly basis. Um, if you're paying someone salaried, most likely you're assuming they're exempt or exempt from needing to be paid overtime, which means you're not tracking hours and you're probably not paying any overtime for hours worked over 40 in a week. Mm -hmm. But as we've talked about before, misclassifying employees as exempt when they should be non-exempt is a very common error that um, employers make. Yeah. There is both a minimum salary requirement for someone to be exempt or salaried and a duties um, and responsibilities test that has to be passed. So if you have any doubts at all whether that classification is correct, head to past videos, head to my website, find the test there, the details there, and make sure that you know who needs to be tracking hours and who you need to be paying overtime to. Absolutely, and is that different on the federal and state level? It like is. Um, the state minimum salary requirement in most cases for New York State is higher than federal. The duties test is the same for federal. The federal minimum is gonna be going up any day now. Um, we're just waiting to hear what that number is. So we'll bring that to you when we have it. <laughs> breaking, news. breaking news. Yeah, we're gonna have right. breaking news version. Um, but yeah, just make sure people are classified properly and you know who you need to be tracking out hours of paying overtime for. Right, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because if the DOL comes in, it's the employee's word and the DOL's word against yours, and unless you can improve, you can actually prove whether or not they worked overtime, you're gonna be paying that time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not worth the hassle. No, like we said even before. If it's, even if you're, to try to, you can't prove it if it's not right. recorded electronically. And, you're and guilty kind of until things. proven innocent in most cases yeah. of being an employer. <laughs> yeah, so there's some things to do to avoid all of that. Yes. All right. Number five, we've made it. This is the simplest one of all. Um, the easiest and the easiest to fix, um, but the simplest mistake you could be making is just simply not recording, properly recording, or having employees record their time worked um, at all, right? So mm -hmm. if you have complete payroll and you're processing payroll through complete payroll or another provider and you don't have any sort of time tracking mechanism in place, you really should be doing it. Um, best case scenario is having employees live punch with a timestamp when they come to work, when they you know leave for their break, when they come back for their break, and when they clock out. Um, if you're not willing to do that or think your employees will hate it, 
at the very least have people self-report total hours worked each week. So there's an actual employee stated and generated record that says this is the hours I worked and therefore I was or was not due any overtime for this time. Right. And again, we, we talk about whether you're exempt or not exempt. Even if you're not due overtime, it's still good to have those recordings as salary because um, yeah. you can get in, get in a little bit of yeah. a mess with the Department of Labor. That's best case, yeah, is to have everybody do it in case there's ever a question of that classification mm -hmm. later, you can at least prove, but... Um, and it's good to have it uniformed, I think, with all the employees. Yep. Right? Yep. I mean... Even if you're a small employer and everyone trusts each other and it's a casual I hear setting. that all the time. <laughs> it's family and friends, but it no. just, it, again, it takes one one employee that you add it on. Yeah. Or, or the Department of Labor deciding to, to walk into the business yeah, and they just don't care making sure that... What size you are. That everything is done correctly. And that's what you want. You want to protect your business. We see this all the time. You've yes. worked so hard to create your business and you want to protect it um, and take all these measures just, just as you were to have insurance. Correct. You're hoping that you don't need to use the insurance, but you have it so you can protect yourself. So. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what we're here to do is help you understand and, and get better educated on what it is you don't know um, so you can go back and, and audit these things for yourself and protect yourself. So. Jen, the takeaway, again, for all this is um, overtime is not as simple as it seems uh, for the reasons that we've stated. Uh, the so five reasons we stated. The five reasons, <laughs> which again are in writing on our uh, on my website as well. Um, so take a look at this. Uh, make sure that you understand if you have supplemental pay as part of any hourly employee's pay, bonuses, whatever, that you know whether or not that should be included in the regular rate calculation. Make sure you're tracking all hours, tracking all breaks, and um, talk to your payroll provider too and make sure that they're automating as much of this as possible for you. We would love to automate it for you <laughs> so you can run your business. Well thank you so much Emily yeah. and we hope to see you again real soon. Thank you again to Anya and Andrew and Cody and we got Grogi Pete over there maybe he'll make a, an appearance later. <laughs> um, this We are at Stolot on Transit Road in Williamsville so we hope to see you here. I'm here often so. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll see you here. We'll, we'll plan to meet here to talk about overtime. All right, and message us if you would like for us to be at your bar next. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers.